You think you own your video games? Think again. Whether you're on team physical or digital, it doesn't really matter. The truth might surprise you. When you buy a video game, whether it's a digital download or a physical disc, what you're really purchasing is a license to use that game. A license. You're not buying the game itself. And that's true whether it's sitting on your shelf or stored in your digital library. Every game comes with an end user license agreement or EULA, which defines how you're allowed to use the software. It's like renting the right to play it, but you don't actually own the game's content. Sounds a bit weird, but it's true. If you're playing digital game on Steam or PlayStation or Xbox, that platform holds the keys to your access. If you violate the terms or the game is removed from the store, you might lose the access. But physical copies aren't that much different, and this is why. Physical games seem more secure. After all, you can hold them, right? Even though that mentality is a very much a boomer mentality since they're used to holding things, they're used to the physical world, they're used to the tangible things, they don't believe in digital. The younger generations do absolutely think that digital has value and that's only gonna grow in time. Right now, people still seem to be more attached to having a tangible product, but it doesn't change much in terms of ownership. In reality, they come with the same restrictions. A physical disc is just a delivery method for the game software. You're still bound by the same EULA. Plus, modern games rely heavily on online servers for updates, patches, and even some offline features. If those servers go down or the publisher stops supporting the game, that disc might be a little bit more than a shiny coaster. Think of multiplayer games. Those rely on servers. You know how it is when you cheat and you get blocked. Well, I don't know how it is, but some people do. When you cheat, even if it's from a physical copy, they can block you. They can block your license from accessing the server again. And this can happen in single player games as well, because you're having to connect in many cases to mandatory accounts, such as the Uplay from Ubisoft or the EA one or the Activision one or any one of those, forcing you to connect to them before you can play, even if you're playing from a physical disc. In which case, they can block your account or block the license of your specific game so you cannot access your game anymore. We could also bring up a pirated copy. You could tell me that having a pirated copy is really owning it because now nobody can revoke it or take it away. While that's true, it still doesn't change the fact that you don't legally own the game. You don't legally own the game no matter how you turn it. At the end of the day, the format doesn't matter. Both digital and physical copies do rely on external factors like publishers and servers and hardware to remain functional. They're just delivery methods. They are not anything else than that. And here's the thing. It's been like this forever, ever since software exists, ever since media exists. It's the case with any digital media. This isn't just about the video games. It's the same story for almost all of them, like the movies, music, eBooks. You can't play a song of your choosing that you bought on any website, on YouTube, anywhere, because you don't actually own the song. You own the disc it came on, but not the song itself. You just own a license to play it and they can still do anything they want with that license. They can revoke it at any point in time. Same with movies. When you buy a movie on a streaming platform or purchase an album offline, you're not getting full ownership of that content. Instead, you're buying the right to access it under certain conditions. Whether it's Netflix, Apple Music, or your favorite digital bookstore, you're purchasing a license to consume the media. The digital nature of these products makes this the default model. Why? Well, the key is in how digital files work. Unlike physical products, digital media can be easily duplicated, distributed, and modified. And if you were able to truly own and control the digital product, you could, in theory, copy and share it infinitely. This would make it difficult for creators and companies to retain control over their intellectual property and earn money from it, which means that if they can't earn money from it, they would stop making it completely. So they use this licensing system as a way to control how and when their digital products are accessed. In other words, whether it's a game, movie, or album, the rules apply pretty much the same across the board. It's all about protecting the content from piracy, making sure it stays within the legal boundaries, and ensuring the creators are compensated. Now, do we have a solution for this? Possibly. Halfway. While GOG today, GOG, gives you a lot more freedom, it's still not full ownership. 
Gawk relies on the fact that you can download the installers onto your computer, so you do not technically depend on the clients such as Steam or Ubisoft, but the developers and publishers still own the property of that game and, and can still legally have recourse. It is though a step in the right direction, but the ultimate step that we have the ultimate technology that we have at our disposal today that's still in its infancy but can become something much bigger is the blockchain. Blockchain gaming is still in its infancy. It'll take multiple years for it to become something, but it's on the way and it's unstoppable. There are challenges to it for sure, but it's a promising glimpse in, into the future. With blockchain, you could buy games as non-fungible tokens or NFTs. The actual game would be an NFT. These tokens would act like a digital proof of ownership. I can imagine a world where everything has an NFT associated to it. It would become like turning the digital world that's been kind of like air or fog so far on the internet for the past multiple decades would become real. It would become tangible because now every digital item would have an associated property that makes it almost the same as physical property. So that digital item, whether it's a photo or a game or anything else, would actually be your ownership and you would be able to do and provable your provable ownership and you would be able to do whatever you want with that item depending on what the publisher or the developers decide to do if they decide to let you actually purchase the game or the piece of art or the song then it would be yours to do whatever you want there are options as well to buy parts of a game or parts of a song you could buy five percent of a certain song and then get the dividends for that song so if it's a struggling artist that needs that needs money, they could put out their song on the blockchain. They could set a, a certain price, let's say $10,000, and you could go in there and if you like the song, you could buy 5% of that song. You would literally own 5% of the song and whenever that song is played on the radio, if it becomes successful, you would forever get royalties for that 5% that you own. And this is how it works with games and with Kickstarters as well. Instead of just sending money out for a game to be produced, the Kickstarters would be like an investment where if the game actually does well, whatever the game makes, you would get the percentage you invested into it. But to go back to the main point with the blockchain technology, you could think of it as making every item that's virtual real, having real physical properties. So now you don't just own the disc and the plastic, you actually own the software, of course, with an asterisk, depending on how much the developer is willing to sacrifice. So they would act as digital proof of ownership. You could buy the games, you could sell the games, you could trade the games, just like you do with a game that's on a physical disc today, where you can trade it into a store or sell it to somebody. You could do that with the digital video games as long as they're on the blockchain. You'll be able to play a game, rent it to somebody for money, and all done without having to trust a third party. It would all be done by the software itself. Whenever you rent your game to somebody, you could set the price, let's say $1 a day. So just as an example, let's say you buy Witcher 5 one day, you could literally rent your copy to somebody else, to a friend, all done by the software. You don't have to worry about them not paying, etc. It would all be done automatically. You could set the price to $1 a day, and as long as they're holding the copy, the digital copy across the world, it could be somebody in Indonesia, you'll be getting your $1 daily until they return that game. So you could literally rent out all your digital items, including your skins. Let's say you have a wonderful CSGO skin that's selling for $3,000 and somebody really wants to play with it to show off with it. You could literally post it on a certain website and whoever rents it will be paying you whichever price you set five dollars a day let's say and you would be getting these five dollars a day for as long as they're holding it and that money would be set aside so the blockchain will bring a lot of opportunities and a lot of ownership to us who are into the digital world it is a wonderful piece of technology that's going to boost the online economy to no end but until then unfortunately we own nothing and we'll be happy. <laughs>